Hi, I wanted to talk about a really interesting problem which happens to be SIPSER 0.12, which asserts that all horses have the same color. And of course, it doesn't have to be horses, it doesn't have to be color, but it's a very important problem because it talks about how to prove things via induction and to be sure that you can justify every statement that's made in such a proof. So clearly this thing is false, but the idea of the problem is to look at a potential proof of this statement and try to find where it falls flat. So what I'm gonna do is I will produce a false proof of this statement, and I want you to first pause the video to see where the problem is in the statement because clearly this is false. And then I'm gonna go over in the proof why the proof happens to fall flat. How do we prove a statement like all such and such is true? Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna prove this via induction. So I gotta make a claim, something along the lines of all horses have the same color, but I'm going to phrase it in slightly different way so that it's a lot easier via induction to prove. I'm gonna phrase it as for all n at least zero, where n is a non-negative integer, of course. I'm gonna phrase it as all sets of n horses have the same color. So I'm gonna do this via induction, of course, as I said before. So whenever we want to prove something via induction, we look at a base case or several base cases, if it makes sense, and then we try to assert something about some number of horses in this case, and then try to prove it for more horses, a bigger set of horses. Well, the base case here is zero horses. And there are slight variants depending on the textbook that you use. Sometimes they use one here because it doesn't really make sense to talk about zero horses, but it's still true if we have zero horses. So the base case here is going to be n equals zero. So I have zero horses in my collection, and this is going to be trivially true because if I have zero horses, all of them have the same color. So I don't need to say anything more there. So of course, whenever we do an induction proof, we need to talk about the inductive hypothesis. So the inductive hypothesis says, if we have some number of horses, we're going to assume that the statement is true for a particular choice of n. For some, and it's important that we use some here, for some n at least zero, I'm just gonna rephrase the claim. In fact, I'm literally gonna copy and paste it down to here. But instead of being for all here, I'm gonna use for some. All sets of n horses have the same color. And in fact, some people, when they write proofs like this, when they have literally the same thing copied and pasted, sometimes we will uh, put a little asterisk or some numbering here, and then we will just put the asterisk instead of having to rewrite the whole thing. It just makes it a little easier for the reader. Okay, so we have the inductive hypothesis for some n at least zero, all sets of horses with n horses in them have the same color. So then when we have an inductive hypothesis, we want to prove it for the next step above n, which in this case is going to be n plus one. Sometimes it's twice n, sometimes it's something different, but usually it's gonna be one up because we need to prove it for all n at least zero. So for every integer at least zero, we need to prove the statement. So we're assuming for some value n, like 27 or something, but it could be any n in particular, we are going to assume that the, the claim is true, and then we want to prove it for n plus 1. So the inductive step, which is going to be n plus 1. So what we want to show, want to show, sometimes we write WTS just to make it a little faster, want to show all uh, sets of n plus 1 horses have the same color. And of course we haven't proven this statement, we need to actually prove it using the inductive hypothesis. How do we actually prove this? I'm not going to write it in English, I'm going to do it via a picture. And that should give you a little bit of a warning by the way, but uh, I'm going to prove it via picture. So let's say we have the n horses right here. So here's, uh, I'm going to call them h1 through hn plus 1. So Here's the first horse, here's the second horse, uh, here's the third horse, etc. And then we have Hn right here, and then Hn plus 1. <laughs> I'm going to represent the horses as tots. 
what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to apply the inductive hypothesis twice. It says that for some n at least zero, every set of n horses has the same color. So no matter what n horses I pick, I'm going to have exactly the same color. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to look at these horses first. So these n horses, by the inductive hypothesis, because there are n horses right here, obviously, and they must have all the same color by, induct by the inductive hypothesis. And then now what I'm gonna do is, well, obviously this horse is outside of the little circle I have here, so I'm gonna apply the inductive hypothesis again, but on a different set. And it doesn't have to be the one I'm gonna pick here, but it, I'm gonna pick this one right here. So I'm going to include hn plus one and now exclude h1. Well, v, this is a set of n horses, obviously, because we have n plus one in total and we removed one, namely h1. So this is a set of n horses and then by the inductive hypothesis, they all have the same color. So these ones also have the same color. Well then let's take a look at what we have here. So we have n horses, they have the same color and then we slide the window over here, these n horses also have the same color. In total, because we have overlapping circles right here, we have that all h1 through hn plus one have the same color. This is a completely arbitrary set of n plus one horses. I assume nothing about them. Therefore, we have shown that every set of n plus one horses have the same color. And so therefore, since we have proven the base case and via induction, via the inductive step, we have shown with the help of the inductive hypothesis, of course, all sets of n horses for any n have the same color. And that clearly is false. So pause the video and try to figure out where the problem or problems happen to be in the proof that I have here. Okay, so let's talk about where the problems could be in this proof. Well, there's no problem in the claim, obviously, because we're trying to prove that, but it turns out to be false, of course, but we need to see where in the proof there's a problem. Proof by induction, there's, that's the technique that we're using, so that can't be wrong. The base case with n equals zero, so let's really think, if we have zero horses, is it the case that they all have exactly the same color? And that's, that's, vacuously true. So trivially is probably not the best word to use. There's a stigma in computer science that anytime you see the word trivially in a published proof, that's where the error actually is. So the better word to actually use here is it's not technically wrong to use trivially, but a better word is to use vacuously because there's no horse to dispute the fact that they have the same color because we have n equals zero here. So then the inductive hypothesis, there's nothing wrong here because we're just replacing for all with for some, and that's how you always do the inductive hypothesis. You assume that it's true for some choice of n here instead of all of them, and then we're gonna assume that that is true. That's just purely an assumption. It can't be wrong because we're assuming that it's true. So then clearly there must be something wrong in the inductive step. So let's think about it. Well, if we have n plus one horses, we can always add one to n because there are infinitely many positive integers. Well, I guess not negative, but we can always add one to n. So there's nothing wrong with the fact that there might exist n plus one horses in principle, but there's a technical problem, which is we don't even know if there exist in the real world n plus one horses because the earth is finite. There are only finitely many horses. So therefore for some n, I don't know what it is, but for some n, n plus one must be more than the number of horses in total. And so therefore we can't actually prove that this is true at all no matter what the property is. They clearly don't have the same color, but no matter what the property, this cannot be proven because this says for all n at least zero, which means we could have infinitely many horses, but in the real world, that's not possible. There's something wrong with that, but let's assume right here, we're going to assume that there are infinitely many horses just to get around this problem. But there's still something wrong with the proof. Because clearly, even if we have infinitely many horses, which we don't, 
They can't have the same color, obviously. So there must be something else wrong here. So let's think about this. And the best way to visualize the problem is to look at the base case and then work with that. So if we have zero horses, so we have an empty set right here, so zero horses, we're going to talk about n plus one horses. So we have a singular horse right here. So this is H1. So this is the first application of the inductive hypothesis uh, to an inductive step. So the inductive step is with n equals zero, so n plus one is one. So we have one horse right here. So all horses in this collection obviously have the same color. But the problem is, well, we can't even do this double splitting right here with one horse. We can, we can circle it like this. If we look at what we have here, this is a collection of zero horses. Well, I can't pick another collection of other than this one. I only have one to play with. Even setting that aside, let's talk about the, the next case up. So let's say, just for example, that we really prove this for all n at least one. And then we have one here, one here. And this is still vacuously true because we have a singular horse. There's no other horse to cause a problem in terms of its color. So let's look at the next application of the inductive step and the inductive hypothesis which means we have uh, n plus one equal to two. So we have two horses, which are gonna be H1 and then H2. Let's do this idea down here. Well, if we look at what n plus one is, we set it equal to two. So that means we need to pick n horses twice, which means we gotta pick one horse twice, which means I'm gonna be picking that one and then that one. Now you notice that there's an empty intersection between these two bubbles. And so this picture is actually misleading because that is telling us that there must be an intersection if we look at the picture between these two sets of n horses. But in this case right here, in this singular case, there is no intersection between them. And so therefore it fails because of this particular case. If we happen to have that this case was okay, then the rest of the proof would probably be okay because there will be an intersection between them. We know that this is not true because we can find two separate horses with different colors. And so this proof fails on pretty much every level, mainly in the inductive step because we can't assume that there's gonna be an intersection between these two sets of N horses. And so this is why we do proofs by induction because in principle, I could make a claim like this, but until I prove every single step of a for all statement, mainly via induction, I can't actually assert that this is true because there might be something very trivial. Even the picture looks okay. And this is why proofs by picture are almost always misleading and should be avoided unless there's a very obvious reason to use them because they're going to give you assumptions about the particular sets you're dealing with when you don't actually know that the assumptions are actually true. So hopefully that is interesting. Leave thoughts about the end horses having the same color into the comments down below. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.